Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear, and I have another video to do for you today. This one is a update, if you will. When I started my channel a couple of months ago, I did a collection video, just to kind of show where my collection was as a starting point of when I began the channel, and it has changed quite a bit since that time. If you know me pretty well, you'll know that part of the way that I'm able to experience a lot of knives is that I buy, sell, and trade quite a few knives. So my collection tends to be pretty fluid. There are certain knives in it which are forever knives that were gifts or have sentimental value behind them or are just knives that I love so much that I can't imagine getting rid of. But beyond that, a lot of my collection is fair game to sell and trade so that I can make room and free up the funds for new stuff. I, I don't have a massive disposable income to throw into the knife hobby, so in order for me to buy new exciting stuff, oftentimes that means selling other things. So even though it's been, I think, about three months since I filmed that first knife collection video, my knife collection is pretty drastically different at the moment. It's big right now. I actually am within the next little bit going to be selling a few pieces. So that's just the, the nature of it. But I'm going to first show you how I'm currently storing all of my knives and then we'll just walk through one by one. I'll show each piece in a pretty brief way. Almost everything that you'll see I've already reviewed. So if you want to see more about that knife, this is just going to be quick showing it. It's not going to be the actual review. You'll have to go back and look for the review if that's what you want to see. There are a few that I'm about to review that haven't been reviewed yet, so keep all of that in mind. But right now, I'm storing the bulk of my collection in this. This is a Harbor Freight um, Apache case. This one specifically is the 2800. I got this and it came with pluck foam in it. I've used this for a while now, probably like two years, and I set it up for 20 slots when I got it. For a long time that was plenty for me. And last time that I did this video, there were even there was like some fluff in the bottom row, stuff that's now just living in the junk knife drawer. I'm not even going to show you those this time cuz I don't really care about those knives. But in here I have 20 slots. I've got all of my spider codes in here right now all but one of my Benchmades and all my ZTs. So this is kind of like a, a primary knife case. This used to be all of my knives, but now I also have an even older case. This is what I used before <laughs> I got that one, but this is just like a wooden, I think it was kind of like a cigar box that I put this like carbon fiber and some stickers on top of, and then I lined this inner wall with carbon fiber just to dress it up a little bit. It's kind of peeling and couple of spots. It's not very nice vinyl. And then I put some foam, a layer of foam on the bottom so that I can set everything in here. And this is my current like overflow. <laughs> and again, this isn't even, I don't have any of my loaners in cases. They're all just stacked on a shelf right now and kind of organized. So between that 20 knife case, let's see how many do I have in here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I've got 32 knives currently in my collection, I would say. Again, not counting fixed blades and not counting like junk drawer knives. For a long time, I held myself to 20 and 20 was like, if I had more than that, that meant I needed to sell some stuff because that's what fit in the case. Now that I have the channel and I'm kind of going a little more balls out on this hobby, my next case is I think going to be a 40 slot case. And actually, let's do this case first because I've already got it right here. So yeah, my next case, I think I'm going to do a 40 slot now pack case. Not positive yet, but I'm pretty sure that's the direction I'm going to go. So I'll show you that when that finally happens. But it'll be nice to have everything all in one box. And then I can use this little Apache case probably after that for loaners. So I'll keep all my stuff in one 40 slot case. And then I'll have a loaner case as well because I've got a lot of loaners certain times like right now. So let's jump in. Um, I'm just going to kind of go through this case one at a time, not in any particular order. Just the way that they're set in here and there's not any rhyme or reason to the way that they're set in here right now. But first, one of my favorite, what I would consider budget knives, this is the Boker Lateralis. In my last collection video, I called this the Boker Lancer, which is funny because Boker makes a Lancer and I've actually owned two of that knife. That one's like a Serge Panchenko design. You can see this is a, a beater user knife for me. Get that to focus. I don't know if you can see how 
gunked up this blade is right now with like tape and stuff. But it's D2 ball bearing flipper made by Boker. It's a JB Stout design. This is a super underrated budget piece in my opinion. This is a it's like a go-to user knife for me for like honeydew list around the house type of dirty tasks. With it's a very solid knife that I'm not afraid to beat up because I think it was right around the seventy dollar mark, maybe eighty bucks. Um, but yeah, really nice one. This one's G10 show scale steel lock side. <coughs> Pardon me, sounding like a teenage boy. Steel lock side, and the yeah, I've got a, a review on this, so I'm not going to go any more in depth than that. But Boker Lateralis. Next, one of my absolute favorite knives in my collection. This is the Quiet Carry Waypoint. This specific one is the blasted titanium on the handles, and it is satin blade finish, Vanex Super Clean blade steel, and nice and slim design, wire pocket clip. This is, <laughs> I love the Waypoint. Next, a newer one to me. I'm actually about to do my full review on this. Probably tomorrow I'll film that. This is the Protec Malibu Reverse Tanto. This has very quickly become one of my favorite knives to carry and use. It is just a gorgeous piece from Protec that is super fun to play with. Very well thought out. Carries great. Adore the Malibu. Next, another new one to me that I'm about to review. The Giant Mouse Ace Grand. I just did a head-to-head -head video between this and the Spider Coast Shaman, which went live yesterday. And yeah, this is fantastic piece from Giant Mouse Knives. I really, really like the Ace Grand. It is one of my favorite knives that I've gotten this year. Next we have the Hogue Decca. I actually also need to review this one. Um, this one I've taken a little bit of extra time to review because it hasn't made it in pocket as frequently as it should have for me to have reviewed it, so I'm waiting until I've got enough experiences with it to go ahead and speak from a confident place. But yeah, this one's wearing an MXG gear pocket clip. I'll talk more about that in the full review, and I talked about it pretty extensively in the first impressions, if you want to know the story behind that pocket clip. Next we have my Olamic Wayfarer. This one is the Sheep's Cliff, so this is the 24-7S. S stands for Sheep's Cliff Blade Shape. It's got the sculpted titanium clip, backspacer, pivots, and I think that's it. Uh, but yeah, it's a satin Sheep's Cliff M390 blade. Really, really love this knife. One of my favorites. I've just always loved the Olamic Wayfarer. This one I actually just loaned to my buddy Jason, so he's done a review of it as well. If you want to check that out, he's the Milli PM2 Para 3 Club and uh, his YouTube channel. He's got a review of this up. So there's the Wayfarer. Next, this is the first knife that I was given for free as a channel to review. This is the Fox Knives Pelican, and it's an N690. It's a K Max ROM design, and I really, really like this knife as a robust outdoor folder. If you watch my testing video on this knife, you'll see I literally like chopped through a pretty significant tree super fast with it. It's really a very nice outdoor folder. Ergos are great. It's a cool, cool knife. Italian made, excellent quality, and I like this piece. Plus it's sentimental because it's the first one that I was given to review, which is really nice. This is the only Benchmade that's not in my primary case, only because it rarely gets carried. This is the Benchmade Sentinel, which was a gift from my dad. He carried this knife for a couple of years before handing it down to me because I was always <laughs> drooling over it and uh, sometimes stealing it to carry for a day. And he finally gave it to me, which was super, super nice of him. I really like this knife. Even this is a very old Benchmade. The inside of the butterfly, instead of saying Benchmade, where it's like written inside the butterfly. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Let's see. It says Balasong instead of saying Benchmade. It's an Alishawitz design and it's just a, it's a really well made knife. The thumb studs are external blade stops. It's partially serrated which isn't really my speed now but it's been a super functional knife for me. It's wearing a great edge. Uh, I, 
This knife is sentimental, so that'll be a forever knife for me. Next we have the Summit Half Dome. This knife is actually made by Fox Knives in Italy. And this one is the full titanium version. This was a giveaway win from Advanced Knife Bro. Shout out to Mark. This one's really nice. The full titanium version gets the titanium pocket clip, anodized blue, as is all of the titanium hardware. And this is just a really nice, small, kind of secondary knife. And it's M390. It's very well made. I quite like this knife. I do have a review up on it. If you want to check that out, it's one of the first reviews that I actually did on the channel, so it's way back there. Uh, if you don't <laughs> find it very impressive, I was still figuring out how I was going to be on YouTube. So next we have the Finch 1929, another knife that I've done my unboxing and first impressions on but still need to do my full review. That is coming very, very soon. This is, <laughs> it has quickly become one of my favorite little knives ever. It is such a great little secondary knife, and it's so fun in this traditional Barlow pattern, but being on bearings with 154 cm, it's a, I guess a bolster lock, functions like a frame lock. Just a really, really cool fifth pocket or secondary knife. I love the 1929. And a lot of people I see are loving them as well. I've seen a ton of people starting to get these. They're really hot right now. Next is my Finch uh, Runtley. This one is the Yellow Belly, so it's Yellow G10. This was my first Finch, and it's what got me to kind of fall in love with the brand. And it is, again, super fun, on bearings, tiny little guy. This one's less traditional, but still kind of a, a it seems like a traditional-ish pattern to me. Got a really cool kind of warny blade shape, and it's got nail nicks, so not only is it a flipper, but with the nail nick, I can middle finger flip it, which is just so fun to me. I love, love this as a secondary. It's really hard for me to pick between the Runtley and the 1929 when I'm putting one in pocket because I just love both of them in that role. Next is the Finch Tycoona. This is another one of their new models. This one I still have to full review as well. That's also coming very soon. I'm realizing as I'm going through this box, I've got a lot to shoot in here. but. The Tycoona is their biggest model currently, and it is really, really nice as well. Very fun, satisfying flipper to play with. It's got this really nice coating on the blade. Let's see if I can show that off a little bit. I really like the kind of like sheen that they were able to accomplish on there. It's not high shine, but it's not matte either. I don't know, I really, really like it. And it cuts super well. That blade shape is just really cool looking to me. It's a lot of fun, and it's, it's a great knife. So there is that. And that concludes the overflow case. So now we can go to the, the primary case, if you will. Let's go over here. All right. Oh, try not to bump over my camera. Be careful here. All right. I'm just going to go through row by row the order that they're put in here. There's kind of a rhyme or reason to this in the organization. Like my top row is all Spyderco. My next row is ZT and TRM. Then I've got most of my Benchmades and my Arius and then another row of Spyderco currently. So I have 10 Spydercos at the moment, which is a lot. It's definitely the biggest brand in my case. First, we have the Shaman, which I unintentionally matched my shirt with today. This one is wearing Fireside Co. Scales and a Lynch clip. These fireside scales are the Seafoam Tarot Tough. So this started as a Tree Rex Shaman with the wooden scales and Rex 45 blade. I believe it was a Knife Center exclusive. Now that it is wearing these scales, I call it the Sea Rex. And I really, really like this knife. It's super fun. This is the one I just compared against the Giant Mouse Ace Grand. So. Check out that video if you want to see more on this, or my full review, or my Fireside Co. Scale review. I've got a lot of content up on this knife already. Next we have my favorite PM2 that I have ever owned. This is the River's Edge Cutlery exclusive Scorpion PM2 in CPM 10V blade steel. And this knife is exactly as it came from them, except it is wearing an MXG gear deep carry clip. I believe this is my only knife right now. Uh, or only Spyderco wearing an MXG clip, and I really, really like this setup. 
It's got the Coyote Brown G10 and 10B Blade Steel. This one is the DLC coated version, and it is just a fantastic, fantastic PM2. I love this knife so much, and I love River's Edge Cutlery, if you haven't noticed. So it's great that my favorite exclusive came from my favorite retailer. Anyway, that's my, my current only PM2, although I've had several in the past, and I'm going to get their next exclusive as well. As soon as that PM2 is ready, you better believe I'm going to have one. Next is my Yojimbo 2. This one is wearing Putnam scales or Putman. I always forget whether it's Putnam or Putman. Anyways, on Instagram, he's just blade scales. So that makes it easy. And it's wearing a Lynch clip. And I've heat anodized the hardware on here to be a bronze color. And this is a great, <laughs> great, kind of defensively focused, but in my opinion, just a great EDC knife. The Yojimbo 2 is a lot of fun. The Yojumbo, as of when I'm filming this, I think just started shipping to dealers. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to get one of those. This scaled up to be a 4-inch blade seems like it might be a little bit much for me, but it also seems really cool and really fun. So we'll see. Maybe I'll snag one of those. Maybe I won't. But I've had this Yojum Yojimbo <laughs> 2 for longer than any other Spyderco in my collection. I had other Spydercos before this one, it wasn't my first one, but all the ones I had predating this one I have long since sold, and this one is my current longest Spyderco in the collection. I really like it. I think this is kind of just going to be a forever knife at this point. We'll see, but most likely. Next we have my Para 3. During my last collection video, this was in here, in fact I think pretty much all of these spider coats so far have been, maybe not the Shaman, but this pair of three looked very different <laughs> in my last collection video because although it was wearing the same clip, it was not wearing the same scales or hardware. This is a Maximet pair of three. It is my forever user carrier pair of three. I really, really love this setup. This one, especially now that I've changed the hardware and the scales, just really feels like it's mine. Maximet is, in my opinion, opinion the best blade steel that they have offered on the Para 3 for my uses with the Para 3 and my kind of carry style with it. And yeah, I just really, really love this knife. I call it apple bottom jeans because it's denim micarta and it's got the brass or bronze kind of finished hardware and it just kind of has a, a blue jean vibe to me like this. The Lynch clip is a little bit kind of worn from, from real carry and use too and I just love the aesthetic of this knife looking kind of worn and weathered like an old pair of jeans. Next we have my Spyderco Native 5. This particular Native 5 is the fluted carbon fiber S90V version of the knife. The only thing I've changed here is I've put this black Lynch Para 3 clip on it, which actually works really, really well on this knife. I quite like it. I think it's it's the clip that I'm going to leave on here because I, I enjoy it quite a bit. But this is, I think, my only backlock. I've had some backlock loaners come in and stuff. I don't think I've bought... Oh no, I do have, you'll see, one more Spyderco backlock. But that one's a little more unique <laughs> in the collection. But yeah, this is, if you've watched my review, etc. on this, you'll see I'm not a backlock guy at all. I dislike backlocks, backlocks but this backlock... It's forgivable because everything else about this knife is just perfection. It is so, such a good knife. I love this Native 5 as a secondary. I carry it a lot. Just, it, yeah, it's great. Next we have some ZTs. This is my newest ZT. This was a birthday gift from my wife. It is wearing a A. Purvis blades clip, Adam Purvis. Um, who designs knives and does some production runs of knives now and then also makes a lot of clips. I got this knife directly from him and it already had the clip installed and I quite like that titanium clip on here. Got Coyote Brown G10 and the 308 is my current biggest knife. I think it's also, if not the biggest, it's like tied for the biggest knife I've ever owned. My Spyderco Tough was huge. I guess the Subvert was huge as well. But neither of those were like forever knives, and this one is a gift from my wife, so it is a forever knife, and it is massive. It is slightly larger than is like in my comfort zone, and that's kind of what makes it fun. So anyway, I've done my first impressions video on this. There's a review to come very soon, and yeah, I really, really like the 308 so far. It is a beast of a folder. Absolutely huge. 
but for its size and weight, it actually carries pretty well and fits in my hand pretty well. Next we have my ZT0620. This was in the video, <coughs> I don't know why my voice keeps cracking. This was in the video last time, but it wasn't wearing this Tarot Tough scale, which my buddy Kyle made from ST Knife Mods on Instagram. That's where you can find him. He is a really cool dude and he made me this Tarot Tough scale. I paid him to do it and I bought the material, but he made it. <laughs> so, um, very, very cool. This is an Emerson design. It does have a wave feature to open and I like it a lot with this Tarot Tough scale on it. It's just kind of freshened up a knife that I've had for years and wasn't making it in pocket all that frequently, every now and then, but it just feels more fun to throw it in pocket now because there's something new and different about it. I've got a video review of this knife and then of the scale once the scale got here. Next is my longest owned ZT. This was a gift from my wife back when we were dating. This is my ZT0350 and it is a fantastic, fantastic knife. There are, it's, it's not really my style these days anymore, but I still appreciate it. Every time I carry it, I find myself just enjoying this knife for its design, for the way it goes in hand. It cuts great, it carries pretty well. I, if it wasn't assisted, it would probably make it in pocket a lot more, but I'm not a big fan of Kershaw's assisted knives or assisted knives, period. That's just not my favorite anymore. But at the time, <laughs> when she got this for me, I wanted it so bad partially because it was assisted. It shows you the evolution of the, the hobby for certain people, myself included. Anyway, next we have the TRM Atom. This TRM Atom is wearing the OD Green Canvas Micarta Scales and this one has had the hardware heat anodized by the first owner, the guy that I bought this from, including the thumb studs, which to my knowledge, this is the only TRM Atom out there with bronze thumb studs because these are press fit in, so he had to send the knife back to TRM and have them reinstall those thumb studs, which kudos to TRM for being so awesome and, and doing that for him. But the TRM Atom is just a fantastic, really slim, EDC knife. I actually, this is another one I need to get my full review shot and up on. I've had so many knives now that it's taking me longer to do my full reviews because to give them all the carry time that they deserve for me to be able to comfortably review them, I'm, <laughs> I, yeah, it's, it's hard to, to carry and use this many knives to build up enough experiences with them to get the review done. So it's like having so many knives is kind of slowing me down in a way. But anyway, this one is, it's a great, great knife. I really, really like the TRM Atom. Come on, focus, there we go. And next to the TRM Atom in the case, we have the little brother. This is the TRM Neutron. And this one is wearing the black micarta scales. They're like a polished micarta. And then I also have a set of red G10 scales that are like a peel ply kind of grippy G10. Those are great as well. I like, with this being a secondary knife for me, uh, like a smaller knife that I carry in addition to my primary, I really like this smooth polished micarta. And this is just, it's so slim. It carries like an absolute dream. They've revised these recently. They're doing a new version that has the clip hole placement slightly different, and they're finally doing a deep carry clip for the Neutron. I don't know, I, I'm not leaking that information. It's on the Facebook group and they're the ones who shared it. But anyway, that's coming soon, which is really enticing because virtually the only thing that I think I would change about this knife is that I would add a deep carry clip. So maybe that'll, maybe that'll have to happen. I don't know, we'll see. Next we have my favorite knife, literally. In my whole collection, undoubtedly, this is my favorite knife. If anyone asks me what's your favorite knife, the answer is Koenig Arius. The Arius is just, it is as close to knife perfection for me and my preferences as I've ever gotten. It's a phenomenal pocket knife. This is also currently my most expensive knife that I own and it's one of the most expensive knives if not the most that I've ever owned. And this is my second Arius. I had one before this that was a Gen 3. This one is a Gen 4 
and this one is even better than the first one that I had. It's really, really nice. I've added this blue hardware that I got from Blades We Love. I might switch back to the satin. I've heard that some people have had issues with this hardware, and then I also, I don't know, I dig the blue, but sometimes I'm like, it might look better just switching it back to satin. I don't know. I could, I could go either way on that. I may just sw switch back and forth every now and then, but right now it is wearing these blue body screws back here, and it's just, it's a fantastic, fantastic knife. It has my favorite action of any folding knife I've ever owned. It's so much fun to fidget with and play with. It's actually amazing to cut with. I carry and use this area, so this is my knife, and I intend to enjoy it <laughs> as such, and it's just, it's really, really excellent. So, that is my favorite knife. Now we've got a row of Benchmades. Again, the only Benchmade that's not in this case is the Sentinel you already saw from my first case. First we have my Super Freak. This Super Freak I actually just got back. It was on loan to my buddy Jason. He reviewed this knife as well, along with the Wayfarer, which I just got back from him. We send knives back and forth now, which is a lot of fun, because we both get to check out stuff from each other. I've actually got a couple of knives that he just sent me that I need to do first impressions on that you haven't seen yet. So anyway, the Super Freak is basically a freak, but super. <laughs> it has G10 layered G10, like really cool kind of g mascus style scales with a red layer internally, red standoffs or barrel spacers, if you want to call them that. And it's M4 blade steel coated. It's just, ugh. This one and the next one I'm going to show you are my two favorite Benchmades that I've ever experienced. They're just excellent. I really, really love the Super Freak. It's a fantastic knife in so many ways. And that brings me to the Mini Freak. This is the Dash 1 version of the Mini Freak, so it's carbon fiber and S90V. You see we've got a bright red thumb stud. All the other hardware is black, except for the axis lock, which is not black. I wish they would have made that black. I think that would have been better, because they did that on here. It's clearly possible. Anyway, <laughs> the Mini Freak in this version is, oh, another one of my favorite knives I've gotten in a very long time. Just an excellent, excellent little knife. I carry it as a secondary. Um, I've carried it as a lightweight primary once or twice as well. Just really really a well done knife. This particular one is first production. I got this as soon as they came out. River's Edge Cutlery posted them and I snagged one because I just, with how much I loved the Super Freak, I wanted to have one and it's, I, I go back and forth as to whether I like the Super Freak or this knife better. I feel like this knife might just get the edge over the Super Freak in reality. It's so nice. Anyway, next we have the Bailout. This Benchmade bailout is a little bit special because I have the, um, shoot, who makes this? Is it Rips Garage Tech? No? Ooh, that's gonna bother me. I forget the name of who makes this backspacer. I'm sure someone can comment down below. It starts with an R. Oh, I don't remember. <laughs> anyway, um, this is an aftermarket, aftermarket backspacer in kind of a geared titanium. If you watch my review of this knife, I'll explain that in there. But this is not only different because of that, but also because, oop, that was close. At River's Edge Cutlery, you can opt to have this reprofiled to a drop point. And it's really that simple. When you're checking out with the knife, you can click, I want it as a drop point, and they will do it for you. And I prefer on this knife, a drop point to a Tanto. And yeah, this is a great, super lightweight outdoor folder for me and I've had nothing but good experiences with it so far. CPM 3V blade steel, ultra ultra lightweight. I still think I'm probably going to do a set of scales for this knife but the ones I really want have been out of stock for a long time so I'm hoping that they come back in stock and I can jump on them but either way I like this knife with the factory scales plenty. It's just one that I wouldn't mind continuing to dress up a little bit since it is reprofiled. I've got that backspacer and all that. Next we have an old standby for me. This is the Benchmade Bug Out. And the Bug Out is one of my favorite knives, period. It is just the, the most comfortable knife I can carry for its size, 
for sure. It is ultra slim, ultra light, weighs sub two ounces. It's got a great blade, an S30V, which is a fine steel, and I have been downright abusive to this knife, using it for very hard tasks that a lot of people probably wouldn't trust a knife this light and slim and small to. And it's just, it's been absolutely excellent for me. I have nothing but love for the bug out. I think it's it's become a staple in the EDC world for a reason. It's a really, really good knife. So that brings me to the final row, which is more Spydercos. <laughs> I have a, another whole row of Spydercos at the moment. Uh, this one is my newest one. I actually still have to do my first impressions. I just unboxed this. Uh, two nights ago, but it's been a busy weekend. So this is the Spyderco Pical. The Pical is a defense designed blade, self-defense kind of combat <laughs> knife, if you will. It is obviously this cool kind of hawkbill, tiger's claw shaped blade. As you can see, it's a very funky grip and profile. It is a ball bearing lock. It's a wire clip. It's U.S. made, comes out of Golden, Colorado. Very different knife for me and for Spyderco even. This is this is abnormal compared to most of Spyderco's lineup, but it's a lot of fun. So it's got this kind of primary grip, which is interesting, but it's really designed to be in a reverse grip, like draw cut, and it's super comfortable like that. But it's. I don't have knives like this. This is unique for me. As you can see, you've just seen all of my other knives except for these last four, and none of those are like this either. I just bit myself a tiny bit closing it. It's it's a different different design. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. Just give myself the tiniest little nick on camera. Is it gonna bleed? I don't think it's gonna bleed. Oh, tiniest little droplet of blood. Focus. Haha, -ha. it's mine now. Next we have one of my absolute favorite knives. This is the Danger Pickle. The Danger Pickle is just... I adore this knife. <laughs> if, you, if you've watched my first impressions or my review of it, or even my unboxing, you'll see this is just such an exciting knife for me. And it is fun because now, pretty unanimous, unanimously, the whole community calls it the Danger Pickle, which is a lot of fun for me that I kind of nicknamed a knife, and even the designer of the knife is calling it that. And it's just such a fun design. It's, it actually carries really well, in my opinion. It's so comfortable in my hand. Cuts like a dream for me, considering it's blade stock. Like, if you watch my review of it, you'll see I go through all of this. But it's a great knife, in my opinion. I really... I am enamored with the Danger Pickle. It's it's one of, it's probably my most fun knife of this year. I could almost say with certain confidence it is my most fun knife of 2020 thus far, and I can't see it being dethroned as being my most fun knife. Next we have the Spyderco Capara. The Capara has become one of my absolute favorite EDC knife options. It is an excellent knife for EDC, bordering on kind of gentleman's carry being this really well finished carbon, beautiful satin blade, wire clip, it's got this cool red backspacer because the Capara, from what I understand is a red backed spider in Australia where Alistair Phillips is from. Just an excellent, excellent EDC knife that I really adore carrying and using and uh, it's become one of my favorites fairly quickly. This is a knife that I have found myself recommending to a lot of people since getting it. It's just excellent. Next we have my only Chinese Spider Co. <laughs> this is the Spider Co. Tenacious. I frankly don't carry this knife hardly at all <laughs> uh, compared to just about everything else in my collection. I, it's one of my least favorites, but I got it because I wanted to experience a Chinese Spider Co. and see what they were all about, what they were offering from that kind of range and, and location from Spyderco, and you can watch my review on it, but my consensus on it is that it's okay, <laughs> and I stick by that. Next we have, actually this is the last one, last but not least, we have the Spyderco Salt 2. This one is the Warncliffe Plain Edge version, and it is in H1 steel, making it a corrosion resistance focus knife. 
which is why I really like this. It's basically, for all intents and purposes, a Delica. But it's a Delica that has been made linerless with all corrosion resistant hardware and blade steel so that it is designed for use in wet <laughs> corrosion promoting environments and that makes it really cool to me. It's kind of a, a specialized tool in my knife case that makes sense for me to take places where I know there's a high likelihood of me and my gear getting wet. So that makes it fun and turns out the Ergos are also fantastic for me <laughs> on the Delica platform, at least on this one. And yeah, just really, really good. So I quite like this one. I got it because I wanted to try a Japanese Spyderco. And I'm glad that I did. I like it quite a bit. Still not a fan of back locks. I would like this knife better if it was a different locks type, but being the kind of tool that it is and as specialized as it is, this isn't like a knife that I need to be fidgeting with per se. So anywhere, anyway, <laughs> there you have it. That's my whole knife collection currently. I'm sure I will update this again probably in another couple of months. Maybe I'll do it kind of every three months if that makes sense, depending on how my collection evolves in those segments. I feel like three month windows will typically reveal some pretty big differences in my collection. I'll have to rewatch my first collection video now that I've done this one and kind of see how much is different. But yeah, there's a lot here that wasn't here when I did that first one. And there's a lot not here that was here when I did that first one. There are uh, uh, quite a few knives I can name right off the top of my head that I know I had three months ago that I no longer have that have made room and freed up funds to get a lot of these. And so, yeah, it's just, it's an interesting thing. And it's fun for me to have a collection that I'm willing to let evolve. And it's fun too to see when I'm making those decisions of what to sell to free up funds to get something I'm chasing, what I'm unwilling to let move. <laughs> and what I'm willing to let go. Because there's some really, really great knives. Like, when I did my last video, there was a Spyderco Paysan in here. I loved the Paysan. Super fun knife. Was it the most functional knife that I had? No, but it was one of the most fun knives I've ever owned. The action was just really cool. It was an integral. There was a lot about that knife that I loved, but it wasn't that hard for me to sell it either. And there's other knives that are less fun than that knife that I can't let myself sell. And so it's this interesting thing where I'm, I, I find myself trying to analyze uh, what is it that makes a knife stick around for me and there's a certain intangibility to that. It's not always the same answer, but some knives I just fall in love with for one reason or another. And other knives are fun to have for a little while and to check out and to carry and try and then they're not that hard to let go of. So. Anyway, I don't know how much all of that makes sense. If you watch this whole thing, thank you so much. This was kind of a long one, I think. I haven't been monitoring the time, but it has not been a short video to go through all of these 32 knives that I just went through. So if you'd like to see me do one of these on my fixed blades, I can. It's not that different compared to last time. I do have another fixed blade coming, so I'll at least wait for that to get here. Um, but yeah, if you want to see that, let me know. If not, I can maybe update that one when I do the next folding knife one because it'll be more different at that point, maybe. We'll see, but hopefully you enjoy this kind of thing. I have a lot of fun showing my whole collection and going through it. There's something cool about uh, having it. Obviously, if you have a knife collection, it's fun to just have it, but there's something fun about sharing it too. I've also, let me know in the comments about this. I've thought about doing one of those like rate other people's collection videos type of thing where people send me a, a picture of their whole collection and I just kind of rate it, pick it apart, slam the things that I think are stupid, applaud the things that I think are great. If you'd be interested in me doing something like that, let me know in the comments. Um, I know one or two people have suggested and it's something that I've thought about doing. I don't want to be mean to people's collections necessarily, but it is, it sounds like it could be a fun video. I don't know. Let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. I know I've seen, I think Slicey Dicey has done that. Um, so it wouldn't be like an original idea for me. I'm not trying to claim that or anything, but if you think that would be entertaining, let me know and maybe I can make that happen. Anyway, this has been a lot of fun. This has been my knife collection and I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know if there's anything in here that is your favorite or something in here that you think is absolutely stupid and I'm an idiot for liking. 
whatever it is. <laughs> Let me know your thoughts. Thanks, guys. This has been a good time. I appreciate you watching, and I will check in with you very soon.